From exhibitions, to professional art classes, to art lessons for kids, and much more. Come check out what's on at your gallery today. Uh, welcome back to session three uh, with the Niagara Falls Art Gallery. We're doing little watercolor segments here just to help you on and give you some kind of idea of what we would be doing in class. So uh, today we're doing watercolor techniques and a little bit on textures. So that's where I'm going to start. Also, you can see my, my palette here and I have left it as it was from the last segment. All of these colors and even if you mix them all together uh, and get a gray tone, they're invaluable. So I would say that unless your palette is really, really dirty, then just clean an area out, but still keep what's there because you're going to use it and, and it is valuable. So we're going to start with what they call wet on wet. And so I'm going to wet my paper. And when you wet the paper, there's some, um, what I call a shiny wet, and if you kind of angle your head to it and stuff, and you can see quite a gloss on it, that's kind of a shiny wet, and the, the water hasn't absorbed into the paper as yet, and it will, and when it absorbs, it turns dull on you. So I'm waiting for this to turn dull on me, and, and when it does, I'm gonna add a bit more water to it, because it sinks into the paper, which you want, that you want it to absorb your pigment. You want it wet too, so. Do that. Now, when you paint wet into wet, you have to use more pigment. Your pigment has to be a little stronger than you would say paint normally. So if I just start with something and maybe do that, and uh, I hope you can see the edges of this and how it's um, what we call bleeding out. But it's, it's so you get those kind of strange little edges to it. Once the paper dries and you put more paint on, then it will bleed out a little bit, but not as much. And this is how you get soft edges. This is a hard edge here. And it's not bleeding anywhere. And that's on paper that isn't wet. But this is called a soft edge. Now, what I want to show you is a problem sometimes that you have with this, and it's called a blossom. And blossoms can be handy. You, can, you, you know, you can use them to your benefit too. They're not terrible things, but so what I'm gonna do here to get a blossom is, blossom uh, happens when either you have more pigment on there or you have more water. And then if it's drier, it says, oh, come on over here. And usually you get a circle and then you get pigment coming around the circle and it's a little darker than the rest of it. So if I take some water and just kind of give it a, a drop there and, oh, it's going over there too, that's all right. but. It will, cause, it will cause a blossom right in here, and then, then you'll have an idea of what a blossom is. And blossoms are fine, but you know, like say, if you're doing a portrait, which it's very difficult to do a port with, portrait with watercolor, but if you're doing a portrait and you end up with a blossom on somebody's nose or something like that, it's not good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that for a while, and then I'll draw your attention to it again when it dries, because it has to dry. And so this is wet into wet. And so you can get some really neat things. You can paint a landscape quite nicely with it, but it's more of a direct method. You, you can't go in and mess with the color too much once you've laid it down. So that's something with it as well. And I'm only getting this because I put too much water on it. So that's why it's kind of, it's in a river right here. And uh, you can sop that up like with a, they call it a uh, thirsty brush. So this is a brush that has very little water in it and you just put it next to this stuff here. And this brush will suck up the water. Because sometimes it takes a very, very long time for this to dry, so. But that's what that's doing. And, and you, you, can, you can see on this edge now how that, that's moving into the water. It gives you some really nice effects and you, you can learn how to master it, but it takes some time. You just have to play with it. And watercolor is a lot about playing and it's great, so. So the next one I'm just gonna do painting on, on dry paper. So I'll, I'll kind of repeat this and I'll use it. Um, so if I come in here and do this, now what I've done there is I've dragged the brush 
and so there's there's pigment on the brush but I'm getting a bit of a dry brush effect along the edge there that can that can be good for a multiple of things so if I fill this in then I get a hard edge on each side one thing you want to do when you're when you're working with watercolor is once you have it down there I would suggest you don't touch it because if you touch it, then, then things happen that you really don't want to happen. And so um, I'll show you how to do that, what to do with, with that too. If I, if I get another color, let's say, I'm gonna take this purple and I, I'll pull it along this way. Now, but, but you see, it, it mixes here because this is wet paint on, uh, for both of them. But out here, it doesn't mix at all because it, it, it's solid paint, it's drier, and uh, it, it holds its shape. If I put it across here, well, it'll, it'll bleed into it, but have to wait for these things to dry. So um, I most, when I paint, I mostly paint dry. I don't paint wet into wet too much because uh, I'm a control freak, freak and, and, and it will get out of hand sometimes. You just you kind of lose what you're doing. It's just not a method that I enjoy, but it certainly turns out some wonderful painting. So that would be something to try. You can see how this is starting to bleed, like the purple is starting to bleed now into the into the paper because it was wet. And the stages of wetness, as I say, that you can now paint, I'll do this, you can paint on here and see down here where it was wet, you see I'm getting hard edges there because it's, it's drying now. Up here it's still wet so it's bleeding. So down here you can, you know, you could make something here, we'll make a bird. So I can get some form down here. This kind of, I lose control there. If you lose control, then you can get a thirsty brush, as you say, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna try to retrieve his beak like this. And I'm picking up the water. I'll just get a little scrap of paper towel here, and I want it just to come up to the where I've done the, the beak, and it will sop up. And I'll get my hands all over things. Sop up the water there, and I'll rip the red part, but it won't matter. Sop up the water on that side. So then, what I've done is I've, I've literally dried that there. But um, you could do the whole thing wet, wet into wet, and have some great things happen with your bird. So this is just a combination of the two. But uh, you know, you could go in there and and let's say I want a little more paint on his body and, and, and leave the wings alone or on the neck. And you could just dab in paint there. This is foot, this is his leg, right? So they just got little claws to hold on to things. Here, I get some red here. I'm just gonna put like maybe a little red at the end of his tail or something like that. You can do that, it's gonna bleed in, but bleeding paint is not something that that you want to shy away from it's kind of neat so over here i have got the the blossom now so when this dries i'm going to have a darker line along there and along here and that's not that wonderful to have that i'm going to do an example of of an outline what and what happens when you do an outline so and you know it's not a terrible thing either because this could be this could be a, um, a technique that that you like doing but if I have this shape and I, I do the outline, and then I want the inside um, painted, not the outside, but the inside. And this is done on dry paper. It's even uh, more ornery if it's done on wet paper. But uh, I just want to show you uh, what happens. And so now if I get my blue and I want to put a wash in a wash, this is, this is say paint laid on your painting uh, on the paper that hasn't been painted before. That's a wash. And then if you do it again after it dries and you put more on and you put another wash, it's not a wash anymore, it's a glaze. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a wash on this and I'm gonna put the wash on and not, oh, I'm just gonna move over, I'm not outlining, but you can see how that outline, because it's dried a little bit, what happens with watercolor is you get a double dose of the same color. So this is going over it and then, then it's standing out like that. So when you outline, it makes your painting look kind of funny. So, and it's a tough thing to get out of, but it is a, it's really good to know right from the beginning that you shouldn't outline. Using water uh, 
is a thing that you can get nice soft edges or a blended edge with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some clear water here. And you can angle your head to see where the clear water is and stuff. But if you, if you, take, if you take paint and you start here and you're moving over into it, so this is the full pigment. And then when you get over here and you hit the water, you see how it lightens? So that's a way that you can get lighter. You can even get it so that it disappears. Like, you know, you can, you can have that paint coming over here and, and you, you start to remove the pigment of it and it comes into the, into the water and then that disappears. Now, sometimes what you get is you get a backlash of the paint. So it starts to uh, head towards the, uh, the dry stuff. So what I do in that case is I go over the wet stuff and take it over just to the dry and just let it move over again. Just let it move. Now, another thing you can do is you can use gravity and you could actually pick your board up, pick your paper up and let it dry that way and then it'll dry going into the wet and you won't get any backlash or any blossoms going up into it. So that, that's a way of getting some nice soft things. Let's say you were doing a copper pot. So I'm going to outline only to show you the pot. Now this outline is background here. And that gets to that allows you to show your your object like that. And then you could you could have it up up top here too. That allows you to see it and you don't have to paint it. You put paint down there, it's the same as this. You you, you get an outline and, and you may not want that outline. So we get the pot. Put some paint over here. And because it's wet over here, and this is wet into wet, so over here, what I'm going to do is come over here with just the lightest brownie orange stuff and say maybe come over here. And then I'm just going to leave a highlight. And on this edge here, you're not coming right into it. Then the blue wants to go over, the brown wants to go over as well. Then you, you know, you can just do the inside of it or put some wine in it, whatever you want. But I'm painting here, allowing myself to paint there and not touching the edges. And, and that way, and it um, doesn't bleed on you, and, and you can have more control of the paint that way. So that's working wet. Um, working dry with the same thing, i just quickly do it again. Still working with water, but I'm not looking for such a big water edge on it. So over here, wash the brush out, get it fairly dry, and then I'll add some water here. And you see it will blend, it will come over, but I don't want it over the whole thing. And then come on this side, I, I don't need the background for this, but make it a little darker there. It comes over here. And then using water again, I'm just gonna blend that into the pot until you get this white highlight going down the whole thing here. Something like that. This edge here, see how it's crooked? And yeah, you can see that, I guess. But it's crooked, I'll tell you that. It's crooked and then if I just oh, it's crooked, I want to fix it. Not now. Wait until it dries and then try to fix it. Because if you do it now, same color, but because it's drying now, you see you get it a uh, double layer and then it turns dark on. So that would be how you would use water on a dry method of painting. And uh, you can paint with no water as well, but it, it's dry brush. What I'd like to do is show you um, my brushes that I'm using. This brush is called a round and it's a number eight. This manufacturer calls this size eight, but you might find another manufacturer that this size of brush will be an eight. So you can see the difference in two manufacturers and the size, and they're both called eight. So, you know, when somebody calls for an eight, then it, it depends on the brand because they're all over the place. And what I want to show you, this is, a, this is called a flat, and it just goes by measurement. They don't go by number. So this is truer. This is a half an inch. But I want to show you this because, uh, say for instance, if we're, we're doing um, bricks on a house or something like this, and you could get you could get different sizes. They go really tiny and they go pretty large too. They go up to two inches, four inches. So you can get them big too. So if I do this, and just do a few of them and then do the course below. And if you wiggle, if you shake, um, oh, we said that just adds character to your painting. So, uh, but 
idea, let's say. So I'm doing bricks for a building. So you paint them that way, but then you want some little bit of shadow on them. So all I'm doing is adding the, the brown, the burnt umber, to this orangey color that I've got here. And if I just come under them like this, not quite dark enough, like that, and like this, on every one. Like that. Now, I didn't paint any mortar, and mortar generally is like a beige or, you know, like cement or a gray. So, what well, you could go in and do that between each one of them. Or, what you could do is you could put a wash down. Now, it's a little dark, let's say. You put a wash down like this. And I'm doing this pretty dry so I can work on it right away. But if you put a wash down, then you've got your mortar down there. And it's not going to affect the color of the bricks too much. I'll show you. Got my bricks here. And they will bleed a little bit like we were doing down here. And then put a dark one in occasionally. And wash it out. And then say, pull something through these a little bit and it just mucks them up like that and then then you go in and you put the shadows in they're wet so they'll bleed but that's okay so I'll finish these up and then what I'm gonna do next time is I'm gonna do a little painting for you and I'm um, gonna do it in the in the loose way so like this way here and just show you the the difference in doing it this way and I'm gonna do one that way too so what I think I will do is I'll do the same subject for each one of them and then that way it's a better comparison. So that's a little bit of shadow that you put on the bricks that way. I think they look far more natural than that way. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this one and you get some use out of it and thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you next time.